I'm Chuck, this is What is the Wheel, and today I'm making an exhaust manifold, and it's not this one. Even if you don't want to open up your Predator motor, you're going to want to put an exhaust on it. This is the stock exhaust manifold. It's barely 18 millimeters across. The port is 25 millimeters across. Let's look at how much of a difference that makes. Here's the exhaust port. Here's the stock exhaust manifold. Look at how much obstruction you have there. The port hangs out over the edge of the manifold all the way around. That is no good for any kind of performance. But you get a one inch exhaust pipe slash manifold. Look at that. You have, let's get it right at the top there. You have almost, almost no obstruction at all. A tiny little bit in the lower corners of the port, in the D side of the port. But that's pretty good. So you can make a huge performance change just by changing the exhaust manifold. And then, of course, you'll also have to, at the very least, change the jetting because it's going to flow freer, so you're going to need more fuel. My goal with the exhaust wasn't just performance, it was also looks. And I came across this, a reverse megaphone muffler. I thought it looked great, stainless steel, styled like you would see on a vintage twin motorcycle, and I got one sitting right there. So I had to figure some way to fit this to my motor. So I decided to make an exhaust manifold. This should be pretty straightforward. I just need something to make this fit this. So I got some 3 16 sheet steel and one of my favorite crafting items, water pipe or Schedule 40. Sometimes this is called Schedule 40. This is just a one inch steel seamed pipe. Of course, pipe is round, so I cold worked this pipe a little bit to create a D shape in it and get a, a better profile to match the exhaust port. I've still got these, you can see these little nibs right here. I'm going to have to grind or machine this back a little bit to get rid of that so I get a good seal. And then I just need to cut it off at a predetermined point. So there's a pencil mark right there. I'm going to cut it off right there just using an angle grinder. You could do it with a hacksaw, but I'm not that patient. I like to mark my line with tape because I can't see that great. And this gives me a nice, easy to see line when I'm making my cut. And you can also be pretty sure if you match your tape all the way around that your line is going to be pretty straight as well. I just realized I had the camera off for the entire cut, so you got to miss that. Just be sure as soon as you get done cutting something with a grinder, immediately pick it up with your bare hands and take a look at it. Actually, don't do that. Now for our next problem. So to get it down to 125, I just put it on the lathe, this little shop fox M149, which is a nice little hobby lathe. I'm going to put it on that and cut this down. You could also do it with a grinder, or if you're really patient, you could sand it off. got to be pretty slow on the cuts because this is, like I said, this is a hobby level uh, lathe. It doesn't um, like big cuts in steel. I could probably go a little deeper than this, but I don't want to tear anything up. So. Also grinding, or grinding, lathing pipe, uh, because pipe is kind of flexible, it can be kind of hard to keep it uh, tight in the chuck. If, if this if this stuff was not so thin or so thick, I would probably get that last little bit by hand here. All right. If this stuff was not so thin, I would probably uh, have to actually make a plug to fit inside the pipe to hold it so that it would stay tight in the chuck. Problem solved. So I just cut this down, cleaned up the edges a little bit. I have probably got a little carried away on this side, but that'll be all right. And now we just need to make 
a flange. I'm not going to use this stock exhaust gasket uh, for reasons I'll go into later, but I do want to use it for this purpose, and this is basically just to give myself an idea of about how much plate I'm going to need to make the flange. So I'm going to sit it on here and just draw some rough lines with a pencil, which will barely show up, but I like pencil because it's got fine point, and I'm going to mark this area here for the port to give me a rough idea of where I want to put and the holes of where I'm going to put my pipe when I set my pipe down on here like approximately where I want it to go and I want it to go about like that right there and the reason I'm marking this out like this is because I'm going to plunge this part. I'm actually going to cut a hole in the plate big enough for this piece to go through and I haven't made up my mind if I'm going to weld it or braise it but I'm going to plunge it through and then we'll get a good contact. We'll have a good seal all the way around this because this will actually be what is sealing against the side of the block around the port. At least that's my thinking. There's no super easy way to do this part. I'm just going to have to rough cut a hole with a hole saw and then bring it out to the correct size using a, a die grinder. And that's going to be basically the only way to do it. This is uh, just like if you were ever in the military, these hole saws come in two sizes, too big and too small. So uh, this one is the closest size that I have that is not larger than the port diameter. So that's the one we're going to use. Another thing you want to do is make sure that you set your limits on your drill so you can actually make a cut with it. That helps a lot. And we'll go ahead and put a little oil in here too. All right, let's try it again. Dun da 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 dun dun da 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 dun da 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 dun dun da 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 dun da 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 dun dun da 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 da. Do 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 Add a little more oil there. Da 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 do 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 Success! This next part is just gonna be me opening up this hole enough to snugly fit this flange that I've made into it. I'm going to be using this big daddy right here and I'm not going to record this because it is mostly just super loud. Here's the rough piece. I've got the flange you know roughed out here. I've got my holes drilled. Uh, I'm gonna to have to trim back a bunch to get it to fit because there's a lot of finning that's in the way. I've got a pretty good fit here. It's a little open, more open than I would have liked right there. Now I just need to decide how I want to put this together, how I want to stick these two parts together. Uh, I was thinking about fillet brazing, and I've got, like I said, except for that one little spot, I've got a nice tight gap. I could fillet braze this, and it's not ever going to get hot enough that that would be an issue. It's like fillet, if, 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 it, if it melts the fillet brazing, i got bigger problems than this uh, exhaust manifold coming apart. Um, and the other issue I have is my holes. Uh, these two holes to bolt the flange down, I've got on this one, there's just enough room. I'm using socket head screws, which I've got laying around here somewhere. As usual, I have tossed them. There you are right there. I've got these socket head screws, and uh, we get a pretty good fit on this side. This thing, I mean, it, it's tight. There's not a whole lot of clearance in there, but it's, there's enough. But then on this other side, uh, there's just not enough room. It, 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 the head interferes so I can clearance this piece for the socket head 
I could clearance the socket head a little bit. I might be able to get away with opening this hole up just a little bit to uh, give me a little bit of wiggle room and shift this over uh, some. So I don't, that'll clear that. That's a possibility. And the holes themselves are already like they're borderline uh, too tight anyway. If there's, if they are, if I drilled them even a little bit off, they're not going to line up on the block. So I think this is going to be it uh, for the making an exhaust manifold episode. This is going to be part one and uh, we'll have part two next week when I figure out how I'm going to put this together and solve my screw problem. I think I've got as far as I'm going to go today with this thing. I've still got to finish shaping this flange out. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do to get these socket heads to fit in here. I've got that one that one that just is a little tight. I'll figure out how I'm going to take care of that and decide what I'm going to do to stick these two things together. I'm, I'm really favoring uh, brazing it together because the, of the sealing, the good join that you get with brazing. And I did a lot more brazing back in the day than I did MIG welding. My MIG welding is terrible. So um, I think I may go with brazing and then actually stick this thing back in the lathe and just uh, hit it with a finish cut and make sure that it's perfectly flat. But as always, like, subscribe, comment. Have a great day.